Okay, hi. Uh, I'm Dmitry Banchikov. I work as a software engineer, and today I'm going to talk about BP filter, what it is, how it works, benefits it could provide, and what are the plans. BP filter was introduced back in 2018 by Daniel Borkman and David S. Miller. It was described as a BPF based replacement for IP tables. Uh, the presentation agenda is quite simple. Uh, first, we will review how IP tables works, and then we will switch to BP filter, how it may replace IP tables and BP filters future. Uh, let's jump to IP tables. So, uh, despite the fact that NF tables is considered to be a successor of IP tables, IP tables still in use and will be in use for many years more because IP tables has a large adoption among people. It is popular, familiar, and successful. And well, uh, let's review how it works. So, IP tables uh, consist of multiple tables, um, such as filter, NAT, mangle, and others. Those tables are consulted for various types of traffic. Each table has a set of predefined hooks, which determine um, at which moment each particular table is consulted. For example, the filter table has three hooks uh, for input, forward, and output. Rules are grouped into chains, and um, which may call each other. They form a directed cyclic graph. Each hook has an attached chain. The fate of a packet is determined by checking rules until there is a match. Each rule consists of multiple parts, a set of matches and the target. The set of matches determines checks that are performed against the packet, and the target determines the fate of a packet. Here's an example of uh, a rule of adding a rule into the system through IP tables binary. Here we see that minus A determines to which hook the rule is added. In this case, the hook is input. Uh, minus S determines the source address, uh, source network in this case. Minus D destination network. Minus P means a uh, level for protocol. And minus uh, D port means uh, destination port. And minus J drop uh, means here action to be applied for a packet. So the default table is filter. So this rule is added to the filter table. Uh, let's take a look how those rules are stored internally in the IP tables and kernel. So each rule, a rule is represented by struct IPT entry. Uh, it consists of struct apt ip which determines a set of predefined matches for protocol and level 3 source destination addresses flexible array member at the end a couple of service fields and fields that determine offset into a flexible array member for rules additional matches and target a rule itself provides a very limited set of functionality basically it is possible to match a packet only by a level 4 protocol and level 3 source and destination addresses um, here's an example. We see struct IPT entry placed somewhere in memory in this case, and flexible array member is substituted by multiple XT entry match structs and XT entry target um, at the end. Each of the matches determines one element from the rule set of matches. Each struct XT entry match contains a field match size that determines the offset of the next field. Here they are. Um, field target offset determines offset to struct XT entry target that contains the target for the rule. Field next offset determines the whole size of the rule and defines the offsets of the next rule. Multiple rules are placed one after the other. Following the next offset field, it's possible to iterate over a blob of rules. Um, as I said earlier, basic functionality is quite limited. All additional functionality is implemented by external modules, matches, and targets. Uh, those matches and targets are represented by struct XT entry match and XT entry target in the configuration block. Those structs are quite similar. They have a union with different re representations for user space and kernel. Uh, user space passes a name either of a match or a target, and kernel is responsible for placing a pointer to actual match or target inside the kernel. At the end of both structs, there is a payload that contains data used by match or target. Uh, struct XT match and struct XT target define interfaces for kernel modules of matches and targets and provides a way to extend 
basic functionality of the firewall. Those interfaces provide a set of virtual functions to check, copy to, or copy from user, and actually make a match or apply an action to a packet. Everything that is described on the demand page, IP tables extensions, is implemented by such is a match or target. Rules in a chain are placed one after another. Chains, chains are placed one after another, and the table has offsets into the block for each of the hooks, which determine a set of rules that are executed for an attachment point in the kernel network stack that is uh, determined by hook. Let's see, review how those rules are interpreted. So, uh, rules are interpreted in the following way. IP tables iterate through rules until there is a match. If a rule doesn't match, then IP tables proceeds to the next one. The first step is to match the rules immutable part against the packet. To be more precise, level 3 addresses and level 4 protocol are matched against level 3 packet header. This is done by the function IP packet match. The match is performed in the following way. Uh, as you can see, there is no place for optimization. If a particular rule doesn't have checks for level 3 addresses, there is still a comparison and there is no way to skip it. And the same thing applies for matches and targets. When iterating on a rule, on a rule's matches, a virtual function is called for every match. Because the virtual function doesn't have any context, it must be written in a generic way without any possible optimization. Uh, why optimizations are not possible here? Because those virtual functions must not assume any context. They have to be implemented in a generic case. That is why this design doesn't allow us to utilize some specific knowledge, either about the rule, match, or target. So, uh, effectively, a rules interpretation looks like a set of comparisons which couldn't be skipped if a rule doesn't need them. For example, source destination level 3 addresses were not specified. For each match in a rule, there is an indirect call, and the target also may have an indirect call. Now, when we understand how um, configuration of IP tables is represented internally, let's uh, take a look at the kernel API for IP tables. The API is represented by a set of sets of system calls. Uh, most important of them are uh, socket info, socket entries, and socket replace. Socket info is used by user space to get basic information about the table, its size, number of entries, and the sets into a block for each of the used hooks. Socket entries actually reads tables blob from the kernel, and the new blob is installed by socket replace set socket call. So whenever a new rule is added or modified, the sequence of actions is to first get the card configuration via get info and get entries, and try to apply a new one via socket replace. Interestingly enough, that this interface doesn't have any guards to prevent data races, and IP tables in user space implements its own locking. When a blob is loaded into the kernel, it is checked that it is valid and the blob is updated to set up pointers to kernel data structures for matches and targets. After a new configuration uh, is installed, it is ready for interpretation. Um, the user space is responsible for parsing text representation of rules and creating the resulting configuration blob that is passed to the kernel via kernel API. The user space is composed of helper libraries, uh, uh, lib IPTC and libx tables and binaries that use them, IP tables, IP table safe, safe and others. Hiram's law says that there are other third party consumers of the kernel API. So um, now, when we have a good understanding of how IP tables work, let's move our discussion to BP filter. As I mentioned earlier, the idea of BP filter was introduced back in 2018 by Daniel Borkman and David S. Miller. It got a lot of discussion and even its first uh, knock. So what was the idea behind the patch set? Uh, the idea was to more or less transparently for an end user replace implementation of the IP tables. Let's review how BP filter is organized and how it might be used to replace IP tables. Uh, BP filter is implemented as a user mode helper. A user mode helper allows to offload part of modeless functionality to a user space process. A kernel modeler with user space helper consists of a user space process and the communication channel between the kernel part of the helper and the user space process. The, communi the communication channel is implemented as a couple of pipes from kernel to user process and back. In a user process, these pipes are accessible through STD in and STD out. 
Um, the communication channel allows passing arbitrary messages between kernel and user space parts. This way, it's possible to implement part of the functionality in a user space process. The kernel part of the module is responsible for setting up the communication channel, starting a user space process, and it's part of the logic. The similar approach is used for loading kernel modules. The kernel starts a helper user process that is responsible for handling all the machinery required to load the model as it's not an easy task to do the same from the kernel. There is a simple serialization mechanism of the communication channel that allows passing messages on both sides. This allows the kernel to make a PC call to the user mode driver and receive an answer back. Another interesting feature that's possible by using a user mode helper, the rich set of ready to use tools and instruments for user space code. For example, while working on VP filter code, I'm using sanitizers and debugging tools to hopefully improve code's quality. Using a well-established test infrastructure, infrastructure is another benefit given by this approach. Interestingly enough that all codes of BP filter might be tested purely in user space because it's possible to pass arbitrary file descriptors as std in and std out for the BP filter process and thus have a shim layer. As we saw earlier, IP tables has multiple cornerstones, data structures, kernel API, and rules processing logic. How are those parts transparently replaced by BP filter? Um, if you want to keep IP tables ABI, it's not possible to change the use data structures. So the user space consumers of IP tables API continue to use the same data structures for rules. There is no change. It means that all the changes have to be done in the kernel space. For this purpose, the kernel part of the BP field is responsible for hooking into kernel IP tables ABI. The hooks are placed into the IP table sets of opt calls, handling routines, and simply pass the control to BP filter kernel modular part. The BP filter kernel modular starts a help user space process if that doesn't exist and passes serialized messages over the communication channel to the BP filter user space process. The serialized messages contain information about speed of the caller process and the arguments that were passed to the sets of opt call. The BP filter user space process waits in the loop for new requests on the communication channel, handles them, and write responses back. From a serialized message, BPA filter knows by whom what kind of operation is executed and what are the arguments. Then it uses process VM read V and uh, to read the supply to set the copped memory buffer from the caller process. And at this moment, BP filter perfectly has all the required information to process the request. The similar approach is to use to write the response back as soon as the request is processed, an answer is written back to a supplied by calling memory buffer via process VM write V, and the return code for the set of opt operation is passed back to the kernel part of the module. And finally, the kernel part of the module finishes execution of the set of opt call and returns control back to the user space caller. In this way, it's possible to transparently intercept set of opt uh, calls and save the expected behavior. Uh, Let's briefly review these st this steps again. Uh, LibAPTC, also, also a party application, makes a set of opt call. Um, sets of opt handling routines in the kernel ensure that BPA filter is process exists and make an RPC request to user space uh, BP filter process. The request contains information about um, arguments, about origins of the set of opt call. The BP filter user space process reads the supplied memory buffer through process vm read v handles it and writes the answer back to the caller's memory buffer by process vm write v uh, and returns an rpc response that contains the results for the sets of opt call the kernel passes control back to the caller now let's review um, what the user space bpf filter process does in the middle of interception We'll review the most important sets of opt call, so set replace, as uh, this call is used to install a new version of the rule set. Conceptually, what BPA filter has to do, generate an equivalent version of the supplied rules in the form of one or more BPF programs and maps, load those programs and maps, and attach them. Uh, we will use table filter as an example because probably it is the most often used table and because it's already partially supported in BP filter. Table filter contains three hooks, input, forward, 
and output rules from uh, these chains are applied to packets destined to the machine, forwarded through the machine, and for locally generated packets. For input hook, a BPF XDP program is used. For the output, output hook, it is possible to use a TC BPF program on the egress side. And while the forward hook isn't supported yet, probably it might be possible to use a TC BPF ingress program. I will focus on inputs and output hooks, but the same logic should be relevant for forward hook. The first step that BPF fields does it parses a curation block with a new set of rules. The same set of verification checks as IP tables does is performed by BP filter. It is supposed that a rule that doesn't pass a verification check by IP tables won't pass the same check in BP filter and vice versa. Any difference here isn't intentional. After the verification process is finished, the parsed configuration block is used to generate BPF programs and map that represents an equivalent form of rules. When programs and maps are ready, BP filter tries to load them and attach. If this step is successful, the past blob generated programs and maps are used to handle the remaining sets of opts, sockets in force, sockets entry, and others. Using uh, XDP BPF program imposes some limitations and provides some benefits. The benefit is that if you have to filter a lot of traffic in the input chain, it might be very efficient, and we will talk about it later. And the limitation is that only one XDP BPF program might be attached to a particular network card at the moment. It means that if you have to use any other XDP program, there will be a conflict. Um, this limitation might be solved by adding an indirection layer, a special BPF XDP chain program that we'll call multiple programs. Um, the issue is that there is no standard way to do it. Another drawback uh, is that currently it's not possible to atomically replace BPFTC program, but hopefully it will be soon because there is work in progress. Besides that, it's not possible to atomically, atomically replace multiple BPF programs. Also, probably it is possible to overcome these limitations for common cases. Uh, to the current moment, we shall have a good understanding of what BP filter is. Conceptually, this is a user space process that has a RPC-based API. During its lifetime, it generates BPF programs and maps, loads, and attach them. Being a user space process gives another strong benefit, security. Relying on a common security barrier gives excellent defense. Even if there is a bug in parsing or checking a blob or in code generation that results in a malicious BPF program, then there is another layer that should prevent such programs from loading, and we may expect misbehavior instead of a risk of a risk of arbitrary code execution. Um, let's discuss how BPF programs are generated. First of all, it seems that there are two conceptual ways how rules may be executed in a BPF program. The first way is to translate a rule into a set of instructions that will be applied to a packet. For a simple rule that, for example, matches against source and destination level four ports, this matching program will consist of BPF instructions that parts level 3 header and compare packet support against specified values in the rule. In other words, in this approach, each rule has its own set of matching instructions. On the one hand, this is ideal from the performance point of view because there is no any indirections, indirection and instruction directly comprise what have to be done to match a rule. On the other hand, there is a verifier's limit on complexity and size of a BPF program, so this approach won't work for large rule sets. The second way is to use one set of instructions to handle all the rules. In this approach, there will be a BPF program that is ready to handle any possible rule that it may encounter. Here we have the same set of instructions that is able to handle any possible rule. Because this approach uses indirection, it should be less performant than the first approach. At the same time, because there is one program to handle all possible rules, it could, it could help us to process really large rule sets. There is a BPF helper, BPF for each map LM, that calls a supplied BPF function for each element of a map. It means that if there is a BPF map with some representation of rules and the BPF function, that it might be used to overcome the verifier's limits on complexity and size of BPF filter, BPF programs. It seems that the combination of these approaches might be a middle ground. The first approach might be used for a small subset of a rule set that is most critical from the performance perspective, while the long tail of rule sets might be handled by the second approach. IP table linearly tries to match a packet against rules until there is a match. This is why IP tables users try to optimize, optimize this process by placing rules 
that handle most of the packets closer to the beginning of a chain. This perfectly matches with the combination of two approaches. Hot rules use the first approaches, while cold rules use the second one. At the moment, uh, version 2 of the patch set for BP filter. Uh, BP filter supports only the first approach for code generation. There is work in progress for the second approach. Let's briefly review how um, code generation works. Uh, I won't be digging into details because they are subject to change. To change, instead, I will try to give a bird's eye view on it. Uh, here's an example of rules. Uh, the input chain for the filter table has a default policy accept and contains three rules that match by source, destination addresses, and level four ports. These rules are applied through IP tables legacy restore, which is a binary that uses IP tables set of opt interface instead of using NFT. And after rules are restored, um, the network interface has an attached XDP program with ID 19. Let's review how uh, code generation works for the first approach. The result in BPF program is composed of a prolog, a set of instructions for rules and an epilogue. The purpose of the prolog is to prepare an environment for executing rules instructions because different um, program types have different context. The epilogue is responsible for the same goal, but at the end of the program, it cleans the environment. For example, different program times have different return values. Rules instructions are responsible for actual logic specified by rules. There is a calling convention that specifies what rules they matches and targets may expect and what they have to follow. In other words, this calling convention specifies a call interface. A set of instructions for a rule may be viewed as a set of comparisons. Each comparison is responsible for some parts of a rule. For a rule um, that uh, compares by source and destination level three addresses, there are two comparisons, compare source and destination level three addresses. If comparison is false, the execution flow has to jump to the next rule. And uh, if comparison is true, the execution flow has to proceed with the next comparison or target if there are no more comparisons left for the rule. Jumping to the next rule requires an offset that depends on the size of the generated instructions for the rule. Because the size of the generation of the, of the generated rule isn't known until there is a fully generated, until the rule is fully generated, uh, the code generation supports uh, fix-ups. To support data that isn't known until even later phases, for example, until BPF maps are loaded and their file descriptors are known, the code generation supports relocations. Because multiple rules may access the same data from a packet, the code generation supports runtime context, which is a struct that contains frequently required data like pointers to level three or level four headers. Because instructions are emitted for each individual rule separately and because the context is clear, clearly known, it gives a lot of opportunities for optimization. Uh, for example, let's take a look how UDP port matching is implemented for IP tables. Here we perfectly see that uh, there is no way to utilize some specific knowledge about a concrete rule. Instead, uh, it has to assume a general case and there is no way to optimize port matching for a single port instead of a port range. On the contrary, uh, for BPF filter, because BPF filter perfectly uh, knows the context, it may emit a single comparison with a constant for a case of a single port. I'm not saying that this is the most critical place from the performance point of view, but it clearly shows that it's more accurate and instructions are possible in case of BPF filter. As I said earlier, the work is in progress for the second approach of code generation that shall allow us to have pretty large rule sets while using BPF for each map LM helper. In this approach, code generation will generate BPF function and one or more BPF maps. The maps will store an internal representation of the rules. Um, it's not possible to reuse the existing IP tables blobs because BPF maps um, don't support variable sized values. The function will be able to process elements in the maps and interpret uh, rules. To support various types of BPF programs, uh, Code generation uses a common driver and dispatches to a polymorphic interface when specific for a program type instruction must be emitted. This way supports new program types easily, only the interface should be implemented. 
Um, let's briefly talk about performance. I don't think that BPA filter is in a state where exhaustive performance testing is an appropriate thing, but because it was mentioned in the version two of the patch set, I will repeat it here. On some simple and artificial filtering tests for input traffic, BPA filter showed advantages in performance. On a single core, BPA filter was able to filter out um, 900 of millions of small packets of DB traffic while still having 30% of the core free on commodity hardware. Appetables at the same time was able to filter out only 200 of millions. Uh, this was possible because the XDP hook is processed uh, much earlier in the life of a packet, thus saving us a lot of CPU cycles. In the second test, available system resources are measured uh, via stressing G tool and the traffic with various firewall is the IP tables, NFT or BP filter. Uh, the main purpose of this performance testing was to show that there are, might be cases when the architecture of BP filter might provide performance benefits in comparison to IP tables. Uh, full description of the testing environment and methodology is available in the version 2 patch set. And uh, now let's talk about limitations of uh, BP filter. Not all IP tables extensions might be implemented for BPL filter at the moment. For example, currently it's not possible to implement functionality of a LED target as there is no BPF helper for blinking lights. Uh, hopefully it should be possible to implement popular extensions with the help of existing BPF helpers or by adding new helpers. Another part of IP tables functionality doesn't have a direct analog. For example, support of namespaces by IP tables, uh, and they're not sure if it is possible to achieve it. In other words, 100% um, compatibility with IP tables isn't the right goal. Instead, focus should be shifted to the most often used and popular functionality. Also, there are concerns about the user space nature of BPA filter. Someone might kill a process or attach to BPA filter via ptrace. After all these security concerns were the reason why BPA filter got its uh, first knock. If someone has enough privilege to, privileges to modify a process owned by root, what would prevent them from modifying IP tables binaries and thus affecting how the system works? What I mean here is that every possible uh, vector of attack should be reviewed and discussed independently. Hopefully most of the suspicious come from BPA filters original design and uh, future. A lot needs to be done. Uh, with the next version, code generation, hopefully there will be a skeleton for code generation and other parts will take shape. The first step will be to add new matches and targets to reach more compatibility with IP tables. Successor of uh, IP tables, NFT provides a tool to translate rules from IP tables format to NFTs format. This is the way IP tables tools work on a system where NFT is enabled. Having a tool that translates rule from NFTs format to IP tables should give a way to switch from NFT to BP filter. Another option is to provide its own user space interface for BP filter. BP filter is a typical daemon, so nothing prevents it from having its own interface with command line utilities that give extended functionality. For example, this interface may allow injecting rules that are represented as BPF programs following some convention. This will allow an arbitrary flexibility that still has a solid security frame because there is a BPF verifiers guard. Another possible area of use for BPF filter is containers. There is a program type BPF proc um, C group SKB, which allows to attach BPF program to every input output SKB for a special C group avoiding using early socket demaxing or IP tables. This may be achieved by using an extended interface for BP filter in combination with or without systemd. Pondering about its user space nature of BP filter allows us to imagine a case when BP filter might be updated to a new version purely in user space. This may be implemented by executing to a new version of BP filter while passing resources and state from the old binary to a new one. Privilege separation might be introduced for BPF filter user space process. A less privileged part may be, uh, might generate BPF programs and maps while a more privileged part loads and attach, attaches them. And uh, it should be possible to add some simple optimization for the resulting program, something like a peephole optimizer 
The optimizer should find code patterns in the generated program and replay them by the optimized versions. And uh, we have briefly reviewed how IP tables works, um, how BP filter replaces parts of IP tables functionality. I hope that to this moment it's clear that BPF filter might be viewed as a compiler. It analyzes IP tables rules and synthesizes an equivalent BPF programs. Despite the fact that BPF filter tries to replace IP tables, 100% uh, compatibility isn't the goal. Instead, the goal is to provide some reasonable level of compatibility and win something by utilizing the NICU properties of BPF for network functionality. A lot has to be done, but I'm looking to the future with optimism. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm ready to answer your questions. I am a little bit confused about the um, deployment model that this is for, right? Because I, it was my impression that the <clears throat> the whole reason to do this hooking into the kernel to get the IP tables rules and translate them through the user mode helper was that we could that it could be a transparent drop in performance benefit for IP tables without user space having to do anything. But you're hooking into the HTTP hook, so the rules are being executed in a completely different place with completely different semantics. So if you just want to write an HTTP firewall, why not just use do its own user space utility? Or are you planning to add other hooks later further down the line, or what? What's the idea here? I think I think that the right answer is that uh, if an external observer doesn't see any difference in the behavior, then it doesn't have uh, probably um, any meaning at which point of the network stack those rules are executed. So if there is no difference in uh, absurd behavior, uh, it's not possible to uh, understand where those rules are executed. And the idea is to probably uh, execute XDP. Uh, and the idea is to generate and equivalent version XDP program that is an equivalent version of the rules applied to IP tables. So that means you also do things like a FIP lookup to figure out if the packet is going into the host before you drop it or that sort of thing. Um, am I right that uh, you mean a case when the packet so, because XDP hook uh, is executed significantly earlier than input uh, hook for IP tables, uh, do you mean a case when it's not clear if a packet is destined for machine or is forwarded through machine, right? Yeah. Uh, well, a good question. Um, I think that uh, probably it's uh, might be solved by introducing new attachment points or it's maybe just uh, because we are not providing 100 percent compatibility it's maybe something that uh, you have to know if you're going to use a bp filter for example right and then uh, another question was the, the performance figures you showed this was with the xtp hook as well right so that yes. shows that HTTP is a lot faster than the networking stack, but it doesn't show um, the firewall rule execution um, because you are sort of like you are skipping a lot of the performance benefit you're seeing comes from not building HTTPs and dropping the packets at the HTTP layer, and it doesn't come from the execution speed of the rules so much, I would expect. Um, so I was wondering if you've tried benchmarking it with something that's a bit closer, like for example, just using the TC ingress hook, I would expect would be um, close because it's interesting to see how much faster is it to execute the BPF 
hook like the um the the rules themselves in bpf compared to uh evaluating them in the kernel in the ip tables filter but that's sort of obscured by the fact that http is so much faster i think so i'm wondering if you have if you have tried benchmarking it in sort of fkb land it's, what, what is actually um, through, said, through hardware XDP or XDP generic? Because one of your slides said XDP generic. No, no. On uh, so the, the tests were performed on a hardware version, and the slide uses just a generic. Um, to answer your question, I think that uh, the first point is that uh, for some cases it doesn't matter. Um, the thing that matters is the number of resources that you have for your space applications after filtering traffic, right? And uh, the second uh, performance test there where we measure um, amount of available resources via stress and G2, it perfectly shows that for BP filter is significantly, uh, not significantly, okay. Uh, for a case of BPA filters, there are more resources available than for a case of IP tables or NFT. And uh, I perfectly understand that uh, what you are trying to say is that probably using uh, and measuring performance for a TC ingress or egress hook uh, will give us uh, completely different results. Uh, yes, it's probably, but uh, as I said, it's not the right moment uh, to do this testing and hopefully with the next version we will see some other numbers. All right. Um, was chat. Oh, sorry, I was uh, about to ask the question from the chat. Uh, Purna if I pronounce the name correctly, sorry if not. Uh, thank you, I was asking. Uh, thank you, Dmitry, for the talk. How does the performance compare to IP tables when a large number of remote addresses or remote address ranges are provided in the rule set? Yeah, it, it actually depends on how those rules are um, constructed, because if you are using for example, IP set uh, feature for IP tables and all rules are stored inside this IP set. Well, for BPF, uh, we may have a direct analog of it and we can use uh, BPF maps to store their um, addresses. And if rules are specified, uh, so if rules just contain, uh, contain lists of source addresses or destination addresses, whatever, uh, this is the second uh, scenario, right? And uh, for the first case, we don't have yet an, an equivalent for IP set, but hopefully we will have it someday. And for the second uh, case, when addresses are specified in each individual rule, I think that uh, the difference in performance probably uh, might be shown by the first test because for input hook, uh, the case of 32 rules if you see um, if you check the version 2 of the patch set you will see there that those 32 rules are um, comprised of matching by source or destination ip addresses so the results from that performance test uh, approximately answers your questions daniel you had a question uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, <clears throat> so one of the uh, original parts uh, on the RFC patch set that we had back then was like whether, um, like long term, whether like the the hooks uh, from that filter could then be replaced with just a BPF invocation, and that way to have them super lightweight and also maybe, uh, yeah, like in, in that sense, I was wondering. I mean, since there was the comment from Toki and, and now like uh, the one statement regarding the C group SKB hook usage, um, whether you looked into um, the feasibility of re uh, replacing the existing net filter hooks, uh, like, you know, like as an initial step also uh, with aided code generation from within the kernel uh, where BPF programs can then call out to some of the old functionality 
uh, like the legacy functionality from from netfilter IP tables, for example, and then like replace it step by step from from that angle as well. Um, like like for example, we we already have like code generator, like in kernel code generator for XDP, like to avoid red pollines, uh, just to name one. I was wondering whether some like an approach like this could also be feasible for the netfilter hooks, and then like to attack this problem from from that point. Daniel, maybe you may ask, are you proposing some like hybrid BP filter? Like BP filter will convert some rules from AP tables and then leave the rest to AP tables? And like put yeah, itself exactly. the net filter hook. So it will be truly 100% compatible then, including the blinking light. I mean, I hope that one is going to be removed at some point. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like an like a hybrid approach, so that you have some part of it as an internal code generation, which would optimize the hook itself, and then, uh, you know, like the the, the other part calling into um, some of the existing AP table helpers. But at some point in the future, maybe this could then be step by step replaced with the BP filter stuff from the code generation that you have. With KFON calls from BPF, you could just call into Netfilter themselves as a fallback, right? And then generate some bytecode that does the match. And if that doesn't match, you call into NFT or. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would make sense as an approach. And then have the actual hook be the Netfilter hook instead of using XDP, for example. Well, it's hard for me to, I think uh, at the moment I'm focused on the more uh, simple issues and problems when you just want to have some uh, reasonable code generation uh, for BP filter, but uh, using it in the scenario that you suggested, yeah, it sounds interesting. I think that, uh, unfortunately, I have to think about it before and I don't have any idea right now. What's your own use case for using this? Like, why are you doing this work? Uh, well, it's uh, maybe considered it as a hobby, and because uh, I like it, and because it helps me to understand how things work. Yeah, cool. That's an excellent motivation. I was just wondering if you had some like application for it yourself, or if it's just because you think. Ah, uh, yeah, I understand that part. Uh, so, uh, my ex company is probably interested in this works, but uh, this is too early, right? So, probably to be used in production, but they are looking for a replacement of IP tables because they are not satisfied with uh, NFT performance. And uh, probably BP filter will help them. So they have a very simple uh, set of rules that have to filter a lot of uh, input traffic. And probably BP filter here will help them. I think we're already four minutes out of time. Let's do one last question if anyone has. All right. Uh, I guess this is it. So, and we're out of time. So, thank you, Dmitry, for uh, presenting. Excellent talk.